heat in the boiling water bath, and that test shows that the precipitate is complete. It says decant into the casserole. You have all your precipitate in one test tube. You take the decant tape and put it in the casserole. You really don't have to do it because it says boil this down to save for procedure 15. We're stopping at 14, so it's the same thing as in procedure 1. We're not taking anything from this experiment and carrying it over to the next experiment. Okay? So you don't really have to do it. The only advantage of doing that is things do get a little hotter in the casserole. And you might get some more precipitation occurring when you transfer it back into the casserole. The only thing you have to remember is before you do that check for completeness by putting it in the casserole, you have to clean your casserole because there's a little bit of residue that even the hot water treatment didn't get out of your casserole. And that will make more precipitate if you pour everything back in there. Okay. So you've already got your precipitate, clean the casserole. But that, that thing where you're transferring the decantate into the casserole and heating some more is really not necessary. You can do it if you want. But then you take the precipitate, this is all precipitates, the original precipitate, successive tests, and he has you recombine them. If you follow my procedure, they'll already be in a single test. In other words, all your precipitates that you form in procedure 5C have to be in a single test tube. It says wash the precipitate uh, three times. First, you use 10 drops of hot water. Wash and remember, you stir everything up, you centrifuge it, decant. That's one washing. The next two washings, this is the confusing thing. It says 20 drop portions of a hot solution by preparing equal volumes of water and one molar ammonium acetate. Ours is a little more concentrated. So when you wash the precipitate, you can use 10 to 15 drops hot water <coughs> plus 5 to 7 drops that's drops, or molar ammonium acetate, and you put it in the boiling water bag. In other words, people read that and they think, oh, I have to mix up a solution of ammonium acetate and water and heat it up and use it. You mix it right in your test tube with the precipitate, okay? And then you put it in the boiling water bath to get it hot. That's the washing liquid. You don't have to mix it up separately and then add it to your precipitate. So you do that, you heat, then you centrifuge and decant. You do that twice. And again, the question comes up, what do I do with the decantate? If it doesn't say anything, you always discard it. That's the washing. And that's what's confusing because it says add equal volumes of the hot water and the ammonium acetate. And everybody figures you have to do it with one thing and then transfer it to the precipitate. You can mix it directly in the test tube with your precipitate. After you've washed it, it says go to procedure six. And by the way, when, whenever you want to stop, a good stopping point is after you add the wash liquid, stop for your test tube, and then the next time you complete the washing procedure by centrifuging decanting. That's all, because you don't want your things to dry out, as I mentioned several times. Now, one of the things I wanted to ask you, here's right. We might present your thing, but I'll write. This is the formula for thiosedimate condensed, that's what he has here. Uh, plus 2H2O. And the products you get. Primary one, the one we're interested in. Or is this the H2S? But then he lists some other things here. He lists There's something really wrong with that equation. What's really wrong with it? Pardon me? No, it's balanced. Should it be NH4? Why should it be NH4? It's balanced as it stands. Somebody said it should be NH4. Why? 
Yeah, this is an acid, this is an acid, this is a base. You can't have all of them in the same reaction because what always happens? Acid and the base give you salt and water. They always react together. So you can either have an acid solution or you can have a base solution, but you can't have a solution that has both an acid and a base in it because they're going to react with it immediately. And the reason somebody said NH4 plus is because I'll put it over here. You put in the two molar HCl somewhere. I didn't put that step in here, but I talked about it the last time. So you have some ex you have extra strong acid. You have extra HCl, in other words. And so that H plus combines with the base to make the salt. Notice this doesn't change because you do have some acid present, so it prevents the dissociation of the acetic acid. That makes your saturated H2S solution. Okay, so I'm going to place some erase it. Everybody's done. But my arm is getting tired. Okay. Now what you have here, uh, <coughs> this is the cantate, you discard, you don't have to put it in the casserole unless you really want to. Uh, but what you have now is the mixture of precipitates, and I wrote these before, but it's, well, why don't, I won't write it again, I did it before, I even did the net ionic equations, principal species, the H2S molecule, but you have all the A group ions precipitated, you have all the B group ions precipitated, and procedure six separates them. Okay, there's the flow chart. So we list here in the flow chart the mercury two sulfide black, lead two sulfide black, etc. He has all the correct formulas, no corrections there. And he mentions the different colors. And now what you're doing in procedure six, and this is this one doesn't go too wrong unless you save the wrong thing. Because lots of times people say the wrong thing, or they open the wrong page and they start a different procedure. So you want to get to procedure six here. And what you're doing, separating the two groups, the A and the B group, and you're using ammonium sulfide. It says, with the precipitate that you've washed and decanted, it's there sitting waiting for the next step. You add 10 drops of ammonium sulfide solution. Stir very well. Then put it into the boiling water bath, stirring, and again, what's going to happen here, if you're not careful, it'll bubble out of the test tube, it'll froth out of the test tube, okay? So, it says avoid heating to the point where you get excessive foaming and lose your precipitate. I guess I have to write it. <laughs> I'm just not going to underline it, but you know these are all precipitates. <coughs> Actually, I remember the last time I wrote both of these precipitates because you get both oxidation states for arsenic. And this is 10 in the plus 4 oxidation state. If you aren't careful with the hydrogen peroxide way back in step A, 5A, you'll probably get some tin 2 sulfide that's mixed in here and will affect the colors. Reagent is ammonium sulfide. These precipitates. Remain. I'm just saying those are the precipitates that are in the precipitate phase. With the ammonium sulfide, these all form complex ions. And remember, ions are always in the aqueous phase. That's because if they dissociate, that's how you've got them. And the precipitates are in the or the insoluble substance are in the precipitate phase. So what you make notice 
I'm using the square bracket for complex ions. Antimony, as I said, the second you only get most of the plus three oxidation state. phase. Uh, what color are they? This is where you have to take the book's word for it. These are all colorless. But your solution is going to look yellow. That's because the ammonium sulfide, uh, the ammonium sulfide when we first buy it is almost colorless. But as it stands around, the ammonium sulfide starts breaking down to give you some sulfur. The sulfur goes into suspension of solution and it gets deeper and deeper brown. So when I first fill the bottles out here, the ammonium sulfide looks a light color. And if it looks white, bring it up because it decomposed completely already and there's no ammonium sulfide in there at all. It should have a yellow to brownish color. Okay. And usually what happens in that bottle, we get big deposits of sulfur on the bottom. You don't want to, you want to get, you don't want to suck up the sulfur with the eyebrow. By the way, the other thing that's in here, you usually have a lot of sulfur, unless you did an exceptionally good job in Procedure 5A. Okay. Notice the sulfur <coughs> stays behind with this material. Okay. Looking at the name of this, which one would you like me to do as an example? Oh, a ton of things. Let me do something really major mistake. I was thinking of something else. I got this one right. These are all what? Anions, yes, they're all negative. Well, I was a big mistake. I'm glad I read what I wrote eventually. All this based in proof. Okay, which one? I always do 10 because it's the easy one. Not the other ones for you. Okay, you had in this precipitate SN. HS minus. That's the principal species. Remember I talked about the sulfide ion? It's almost impossible in an aqueous solution to have sulfide as the principal species. In an acidic solution, H2S is the principal species. That's why I wrote the net ionic equations the way I did. For this procedure, the principal species is HS minus. Now again, the textbook does weird equations where he has ammonium sulfide as one of his reactants, and he makes ammonium compounds. Now if you have this with three ammoniums, that is a compound, but that means you evaporated all your liquid and then settled out as a precipitate. As long as there's liquid present, you're not going to have the compound because all ammonium compounds are soluble. Until we get to procedure five, experiment four. So these are all soluble, that means the ammonium is a spectator ion. But you do have slightly basic solution, even in the ammonium sulfide, you have some NH3. Because it would be the same problem if I do this reaction. If I do this reaction, I have an H plus left over. And that would say I have an acidic solution, but I don't really have an acidic solution. It's slightly basic here. There's some ammonia that will be available. I can use up that hydrogen ion. This is the net ionic equation for forming that complex. The others do the same thing, except here you have two arsenics. So you have two of these, and you need a lot more HS and a lot more ammonia to make ammonia. Balance out the equation. And how do you name this? Oh, you didn't read ahead. No, oh, so it's all right up for you. We're using the thio that, to represent the sulfur when it's in a complex like this. So it's trithio. <coughs> then we name it stanate, which is negative, and we have to use the classical name. 